This is the Palin Update on Sarah Net Radio. I'm Kevin Shola. Rand Paul was right when the senator engaged in the filibuster and what he was asking for those couple of months ago. He was asking for these unanswered questions about domestic use of drones and the impact on the American public. Governor Palin supported Rand Paul's historic filibuster, and she supported his candidacy for Senate in the Bluegrass State. Palin has spoke very highly of Senator Paul, saying his brand of libertarian-leaning conservatism attracts young voters, and he knows what it takes to restore our prosperity and preserve the blessings of liberty for future generations. Today, Senator Rand Paul joins us on the Palin Update. America by Heart has been released in paperback. Governor Palin quotes Ben Franklin for a little common sense, and Todd and Sarah Palin go on an outdoor adventure. Susan Stimson is here to talk about her new Saranet radio feature, Commonwealth Common Sense. And just ahead, our latest edition of Steel Resolve with Sarah Steelman. First, as Sarah Palin has put it, he's a clear-sighted eye doctor. He's also a U.S. Senator from the great state of Kentucky, and we are happy to have him here on Saranet Radio. Senator Rand Paul, thank you for joining us today on the Palin Update. Glad to be with you. Sir, with all the ongoing scandals and all the incompetence in Washington, you've really emerged as one of the very few elected officials that people feel they can trust. Why can't others in D.C. show the honesty and integrity you've displayed? Because you're proof it can be done. Well, you know, I'm not quite sure sometimes. I just try to look at the problems and say, you know, what I feel to be true. So when, you know, Benghazi happened, everybody came to that committee hearing when we had Secretary Clinton there, and they're like, you know, saying what a great Secretary of State she was. And I I wasn't there to dispute that, but I really wanted to know some questions. When they ask you for security, why didn't you answer them? Why didn't you give them the security they requested? And I was really upset by the answer. I found out that she she never even looked at the request. And she was busy traveling the world, which I guess you can compliment her for that, but I really wish she would have been paying some attention to one of the five most dangerous countries in the world. So I guess I look at things uh, from a point of view of, you know, we need to make things better, and there's certain things that are inexcusable. And I think, you know, not providing security for our ambassador was inexcusable. Governor Palin has been a big supporter of yours, endorsing your Senate run in Kentucky years back, and more recently speaking out very much in favor of your historic filibuster. What does her support mean to you? You know, it's been great. One of the things that's uh, been nice is, you know, she sent us, I think it was some caribou beef jerky to keep my energy up uh, during the (laughs) filibuster. So, uh, no, Sarah uh, went out on a limb to endorse me in the primary, and uh, we were very grateful for that. Now, back to the filibuster. I have to tell you, sir, that night was incredible. My, My phone lit up from friends and associates all over the country saying things like, proud to be an American and liberty is won tonight, or just simple texts like, go Rand, go. I know the purpose of the filibuster was to get answers, but did you also know it would truly rally Americans across the nation? I think we had no idea, really, of the result to it, and it really wasn't planned in any way to to sort of bring about a result, but I think I was truly just amazed by the outpouring of support for it, and really that it reached beyond any kind of sort of party lines or partisan label, because really things like, you know, a right to a trial by jury, a right not to be, you know, uh, leveled with a drone without any kind of accusation or any kind of court proceeding, I think it resonated for a lot of people. And really the the most interesting thing about it was is that it really did go beyond. It wasn't just Republicans. There were Democrats. There were young people. There were all kinds of people who said, you know what, really we need to have some rules. Our government does need to be restrained. And like you said, people didn't know how you could do it, uh, such a time-consuming effort. But again, I guess the caribou jerky or the moose jerky put you over, <laughs> put you over the hump, right? That's right. Uh, now, despite your efforts that night and the efforts of Ted Cruz and the others who supported you, I remember that weekend, who was on all the Sunday talk shows but Jeb Bush. Did that again just drive home again that this is a 24-7 battle and that you have to keep working hard every day, even you know, after obviously you acted like such a patriot, the media still didn't see the story and instead went with the establishment? Yeah, I think the, the mainstream networks are some somewhat out of touch and people are finding their news more on the Internet and more on cable news. And so the only good thing about it, though, is that ideas that resonate can resonate. They're not controlled by filters. You know, they're not controlled by the mainstream media so much anymore. And I think that's a good thing. So the Internet really has liberated us. 
And I think the protection of the Internet from regulation, from tax, um, from overly uh, zealous and snooping uh, spy masters, I think all of that is something that's resonating with the youth. And really, if we want to win national elections again, we have to figure out how to get you know some of that youth vote back. And in the last month or so, since the NSA spying scandal has come forward, I think you're seeing that a lot of the youth have deserted Obama on this as they've found that really he hasn't been honest about spying on people on the Internet or their phone calls. You were named to Time Magazine's list of the 100 most influential people in the world, and they even put you on the cover. And for your feature in that issue, Sarah Palin wrote, among other things, that you're a voice of reason awakening the public. She called your filibuster Capra-esque. First of all, how did it come to be that Governor Palin would write this, and what did you think of it? You know, I'm not sure exactly. I guess the magazine asked her, and uh, I really didn't uh, have any contact. I saw Sarah Palin uh, not too long ago at the Kentucky Derby, and that's the first time I'd seen her in about a year or so. But uh, so I'm not sure. I guess Time Magazine picked her to do that, but uh, I was uh, complimented and gratified by what she had to say. Now, here's something that needs clarification. I've noticed almost all Palin supporters support you, but I have heard about some Paul supporters who are not big on Governor Palin. Not sure if some of it is just not being aware of her libertarian streak or maybe not knowing her record. Could you today tell Paul supporters why Governor Palin is someone they need to examine and understand that she's fighting for many of the same things that you're fighting for? Because to me, sir, it seems the two of you are very often on the same page. You know, I'm not sure of any kind of real difference on supporters or how to explain it. I do know that even some of my dad's supporters don't support me and vice versa. <laughs> so, you know, it, there's not always 100% overlap with people who support one person versus the other. But I would say that from what I understand and what I've heard of uh, Sarah Palin's positions, that there is a, a, a great deal of overlap. And, you know, I'm uh, sure that uh, if she were a member of the U.S. Senate, you'd find her right there with uh, Mike Lee and Ted Cruz and I. How is your dad? He's doing great. He's uh, doing some speaking. He likes speaking to college kids, and uh, he's always been a man of ideas, and he likes spreading those ideas. We had your father, uh, Representative Ron Paul, on the show during his 2012 run for the White House. What have you learned from him when it comes to politics, and what's the biggest difference between yourself and your dad on the issues? Well, you know, we tend not to spend a lot of time differentiating or going through a laundry list of things because, you know, I like to sit at, with the adults, you know, at Thanksgiving at the adult table. So I try to be careful about that. But, uh, yeah, just kidding. But the thing is, is that uh, I think one of the things I admire about him is that um, he's genuine, he's honest, uh, he's resolute, he doesn't pull any punches. And uh, people often come up, and even if they don't always agree with him, they'll say they know where he stands and they know that he's consistent and uh, tries to be a truth teller. And I think there's not enough of that in politics. People have attributed this slogan of worst president ever when referring to Obama to you of late. Is, is that your assessment on this administration? Is there hyperbole there, or is this the worst president we've seen? You know, I, I haven't really... Uh, I don't believe I've said worse, but I w have said that uh, he's losing the moral authority to lead the nation, and I truly believe that because it's just one scandal after another. And really the, the hypocrisy is just outrageous, you know, of a person who once upon a time said he was a defender of privacy, said he would be a defender of civil liberties, and now it turns out that he's really not even doing the things that uh, were said to be his forte, said to be his true belief system. And uh, so I guess that's what bothers me. And, you know, we're now looking at another war in Syria. And uh, he was a senator who seemed to be not that eager for war. Now as a president, uh, seems to be uh, getting us involved in a third war. And there's some great ironies to Syria, you know, sending arms and weapons to Islamic rebels who in all likelihood will be killing Christians who are on the other side of this war. Really, I just have trouble stomaching that. The other problem I have is we're going to be sending arms and weapons and money to um, Islamic rebels who are actually allied with al-Qaeda in this war. So there are some great ironies here that I think you'll have trouble overcoming. Senator, could we see another filibuster down the road if that's what it takes, regardless of the issue? I mean, you've been through it once now, or do you tag in Cruz or Lee on one of these next time? It's a, it's a big effort there. Yeah, you can't really do it jointly. People can come and ask questions and relieve you a little bit, 
but basically one person has to hold the floor. That's the way the rules are. So the one person can't leave the floor, can't go to the bathroom, can't sit down, and has to remain standing and on the floor the whole time. They do sort of give you some leniency with letting other people ask questions. So Mike Lee and Ted Cruz coming to the floor and asking a lot of questions definitely was a help. You have proven again and again, sir, that you will fight for liberty. It doesn't matter what party or who's involved. You recently teamed with some Democrats to speak about military sexual assault. I think that's what Palin and so many see in you. you you're for substance, not politics, and that's you know not something we see all the time in Washington right now. Well, you know, I try to look at, at problems as a physician. What's the solution to this? You know, not uh, which party should I be with or who, who should I support because it's a Republican or a Democrat. So sexual assault or violence in the military, there's just no place for that. And the military keeps saying they're going to get rid of it. But the problem is they keep the status quo. And when I first heard uh, Senator Gillibrand's um, solution, which was, you know, people are afraid to report because, you know, 25 percent of these assaults come from someone in your chain of command. They're afraid to report these assaults that simply by changing how they're reported, by letting them being reported still within the military, but just to a military, a lawyer, instead of to your commander or your boss, uh, just seemed to make sense to me and seemed like the right thing to do. Senator Paul, thank you so much. You're a great American. We really appreciate you coming on. And again, uh, of course, uh, getting out there the power of caribou jerky and moose jerky. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Take care. A true patriot, Rand Paul of Kentucky. Learn more about the senator by visiting paul.senate.gov. HarperCollins has released America by Heart this month in paperback. And a great new cover photo shows Governor Palin riding a horse at the Reagan Ranch. America by Heart, now in paperback. You can try your local bookstore or you can order online at HarperCollins.com. Governor Palin takes a shot at big government this past week with a little help. From Benjamin Franklin, Palin posting a Franklin quote, They who can give up essential liberty to obtain a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. Then Palin goes on to say, The government needs to stay out of our garage, refrigerator, church, gun safe, bookshelf, etc. America, are you willing to give up freedom for more government control? And Todd and Sarah Palin had quite an outing this past week, and of course it involved the outdoors and plenty of fun. The Palins went mounted shooting at Bell Cross Ranch and then did a little fly fishing out on Bristol Bay. Good to see the Palins having a little downtime. Some great pictures were posted by the governor. you got to check those out. To see any of Governor Palin's posts in their entirety, visit Sarah Palin's Facebook page or follow her on Twitter at Sarah Palin USA. Well, we are starting a brand new feature here on Saranet Radio. Each and every week, I'm going to be joined by our friend Susan Stimson from Virginia. And the chair of the Stafford County Board of Supervisors will offer her thoughts on all different topics. And today, we just wanted to bring her in and reintroduce her to the listeners. Susan, welcome back to the Palin Update. Thank you, Kevin. It is my pleasure to be here. We're so happy to have you here now. As a regular, you'll be weighing in on all sorts of issues and topics during Commonwealth Common Sense, which we will officially, so to speak, kick off during next week's show. So again, welcome as a regular on the Palin Update. I really appreciate the opportunity, and Kevin, I think you do such a good job just keeping an eye on the national stage, issues that are important to Americans in general. And from my perspective, being a Virginian, this is where it all began. This is the cradle of the nation. It's where the, the founders came to really just try to fight for and, and establish that liberty that every American, I think, uh, appreciates and understands. Well, I appreciate you saying that, and absolutely on Virginia. Now, we had you on as a guest during your run for lieutenant governor in Virginia, and we were so impressed with your views and honesty, and you weren't afraid to talk about things in a real manner, you know, something that Governor Palin is known for. And since then, you've done the same, exposing how that nomination process went. So uh, I think people, uh, you know, who are in the know and are doing their homework here really... Uh, can learn something from you uh, from being on the inside and, and not giving up despite some of the problems that we run into with the establishment and the political class. Well, even at a convention that we're supposed to have the grassroots, it's all about the grassroots and everyone kind of coming together and, and voting and making a decision, there still was some pretty 
powerful forces together from consultants and some of the political elite. And I did come in second place on that first ballot. Uh, E.W. Jackson finished first, and I finished second, uh, right, right where we wanted to be. We wanted to be in the top two. And lo and behold, the Republican Party of Virginia announced me in last place, and they listed me in last place. So my supporters thought that I was uh, effectively in last place, and so that killed our campaign. But it's not going to change what I want to do, and that is just to continue to try to be a voice for what I think a lot of people are concerned about right now, and that is just a, a complete erosion of many of our liberties. And so I don't think that we should fear people speaking about these things. I think that we should have this debate And I think that that's what I'm hoping to do here on your program is just to continue to talk about these issues that I think are really important to what's happening in our nation right now. You got to meet Governor Palin back in 2008, and you've been a defender ever since. And, you know, you can tell Palin supporters today, if you could, just a bit about uh, why you admire the governor. I know that um, there's a lot of similarities there between Palin and yourself. Well, one thing that I have also come to appreciate that it is right now, especially in Virginia, it's a struggle for women to be in elected office. Uh, For whatever reason, in 26 years, we have not had one female Republican statewide nominee, and we've only had one female as a statewide elected office holder in the state of Virginia, and that was a Democrat So I would like to see more women be involved, and it's not because that perspective is a better perspective, but it is a perspective that I think is missing from the table. So when Sarah Palin came onto the scene in 2008, she was breaking some ground herself, and I watched how she handled it, and I watched how she was treated, and I think that there are a lot of women that learned from that, and it's not just true about Sarah Palin, but I really do admire the way that she is unafraid to speak out. And I think that we just need to have more people who are in elected office that are willing to just be authentic and just speak honestly with people. Well, we are so looking forward to this. You're a great addition to the show, and this is going to be a lot of fun. We'll talk to you next week, Susan. Kevin, thanks, and I'm really looking forward to it. Next week, we kick it off for real Commonwealth Common Sense with Susan Stimson. Now, our weekly commentary, Steel Resolve. Here's Sarah Steelman. Thanks, Kevin. If you're one of those people who still believe everything you read in the press or hear on TV or radio, you need to rethink your position. What is wrong with these columnists and reporters who either can't or refuse to get the facts straight about the George Zimmerman trial and verdict? The mischaracterization of the facts are unbelievable. The post-verdict opinion makers editorializing about racism is irresponsible and wrong. It is terribly sad that Trayvon Martin is dead. It's heartbreaking for the parents and the families. I believe most people in America empathize with their terrible loss, and I'm sure that both Zimmerman and Trayvon's family wish they could undo the events of that night. But the racism aspect of this trial doesn't exist. The FBI already had it very thorough investigation of Zimmerman prior to the trial, issued a report and found that he was not motivated by race. What isn't being discussed is just bad judgment by two people. I have three boys of my own. The two oldest boys have gotten into some pretty bad messes by being in the wrong place at the wrong time, despite being warned about the dangers of their behavior. They have had to suffer the consequences of their own bad judgment. As a parent, it is tough to watch. Each one of my two older boys put themselves in dangerous positions where they both could have ended up dead on the street, one in Chicago and one in Springfield, Missouri. I pray for my sons, and let's pray for all young men to use good, sound judgment and not put themselves in bad or dangerous positions that invite trouble. That's the lesson from Trayvon Martin, no matter what the color of your skin. This is Sarah Steelman for Serenet Radio. Tune in again next week for another segment of Steel Resolve right here on the Palin Update. 
The Palin Update, including Steel Resolve, is on demand and available for download, so just head to saranetradio.net, pick the show you want to hear, and you can listen anywhere, anytime. Well, that'll just about do it for this edition of the Palin Update on Saranet Radio. Visit saranetradio.net for continuing coverage of Governor Palin. And follow along on Twitter, at Saranet Radio, at Kevin Shola, at Susan B. Stimson, and at Sarah underscore Steelman. We're on Facebook, too, so like Saranet Radio and like Kevin Shola. Palin Patriots is our can't-miss feature on saranet.net. Check out the writings from our great panel of contributors, including Martha Zoller. And I'm doing some writing for Breitbart News. Just go to Breitbart.com and search Kevin Shola. I want to thank Susan Stimson, Sarah Steelman, and everyone here at Saranet Radio. Thanks to Senator Rand Paul. And thank you for listening today. Please be sure to join us again next time for another edition of the Palin Update. I'm Kevin Shola. Have a pleasant day.